Hey, this is John Carlos, and I'm here with a look at the Mandalorian and the Child Deluxe Version Hot Toy Six Scale Collectible Set. So here's the figure right out of the packaging. There's still a few little accessories that need to be attached. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, I just want to show you guys what he looks like fresh out of the box. Now, I'm not big on uh, showing off articulation. I don't really like videos where people spend a lot of time showing you every single point of articulation. It's not really my jam. I won't be doing it here. But I will point out that the ankle joints within the boot are very effective, so I'm happy about that. They're not too stiff. They're not too loose. Uh, the armor does not restrict the articulation, except for the shoulders. Uh, there is a little bit of a limit there, but um, I don't really plan on putting him in a T-pose anyway, so don't really care. I do want to show you guys the details within his outfit because they did a great job with this. It's Hot Toys. It's what I've come to expect. Um, like the ammo uh, you know, on his like belt there. The armor itself looks really good. Um, there's some nice detail to like some of the little scuffs on his butt. Look at that little dented butt armor. Um, but yeah, the belt, the little, uh, this little strap is for holding in his gun. We'll, we'll show you that in a moment. But here's a look at some of his back armor underneath uh, that cape. I really like the like the weathering on the little elements of his belt. Like obviously, it's like a faux leather strap going across the, uh, the chest and belt. But these little like sculpted pouches look really, really good. Um, here's some more damage on his... Uh, little right thigh plate. The rest of the plates look really good to me. Uh, I love the boots. Hot Toys always been really good with boots and shoes. A lot of nice detail here, even within like the knee pad. Uh, the cloth undersuit is pretty basic, but um, it, it's well tailored as far as like the little seams go. Um, the same thing with the cape. It's basic. There's not a lot of, like, there's no pattern to it. But it all works. It all looks really clean. I'm not complaining whatsoever. Uh, and then the helmet. The helmet looks great. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Again, no real paint to speak of, but as far as like the sculpt, as far as capturing the look of Din Djarin's helmet, this is pretty great. This figure comes with a lot of accessories, but the most important one has got to be Baby Grogu, which as you can see here does not have a cloth outfit, but has a sculpted costume, which I think was the right approach. Because in this size, in this scale, I can't imagine you can get fabric to lay like this, to, to read like this, without getting all puffy and weird. Also, there are no points of articulation here aside from the head, which also works for me because, like, in the show, I mean, he sits and then he moves his arms a little bit. Uh, not much articulation to speak of that you need to translate. And, and articulated arms, I think, would ruin the, the flow of this sculpt quite a bit. Speaking of the sculpt, it is excellent. Not just the way it wrinkles, but, like, the details on the seams like the, the little faux fur collar, uh, and just the surface texture. That, that texture looks really, really great. I love the placement of the hands um, and just the paint on like the nails. And then the head is excellent. Here is the articulation. It's pretty minimal. But the shading on the ears, the, the eyes, you can just barely make up the little brown circles there. I love they included his teeth. The sculpt on the cheeks and brows look good. His ears are kind of sloped downward. There is a second Grogu that comes with this deluxe edition with a completely different head, but this head, I like it. One of the accessories that goes with Grogu is this little tiny necklace. You just pop the head off, put the necklace on, pop the head back on, and hot damn, I think that looks really, really good. The rifle is also a really nifty accessory um, because it has a lot of really cool details to it. And not just like design details where like, you know, the paint is well applied, which it is, or like that there's detailed sculpts, you know, which also, there, there's really good sculpting here. Also, the, the, the wood effect there uh, for the back section looks good. But there's a lot of fun little details, like the scope pops off, so it can be like his individually held uh, viewing scope. And then also, this little section right here opens up, so you can take the ammo off of the figure and actually load the ammo into the gun. Besides the rifle, we also get his blaster, and the details on this are pretty great. I mean, it's Hot Toys. The details on all of it are pretty great. Here we have his tracking fob. We also get a little detonator. And we have the, uh, the, like the exposed whistling birds. We can switch that out with the, uh, the other part of his whistling birds gauntlet. We'll do that in a moment. We also have the little flashlight attachment for his helmet. We have a single piece of Beskar. I like the, uh, the, the 
paint app on that so it really still reads kind of like metal with that little swirly dirly in there we also have his knife nice details on the knife uh let's see we get you know the additional wrist pegs uh we have batteries which uh, i'll show you later uh what those go for go to we have a pair of fist hands we have a pair of uh, trigger finger hands and we have a right grip hand we also have an alternate shoulder plate with the uh, mud horn on there. And it just attaches the little Velcro piece. We'll attach that in a moment. We also have this uh, flaming attachment. Uh, all this will be shown momentarily. And we have his little grapple, which uh, I was surprised. I saw how thin this was, and I thought it was going to be like very delicate. But it feels like a very sturdy, thin piece of metal, though, so that's cool. It also comes with his trusty jetpack and uh, these little attachments, the little flying fire flame attachments. Um, there's a little magnet back there so you can attach it to the back of the figure via magnets. Let me just plug on the flame attachments here just so you can see that effect. I appreciate there's like a little bit of purple right there on the edge of the, uh, the metal there. Now we'll take a look at some of the accessories that are exclusive to the deluxe edition, including this hologram of the Mandalorian and this attachment of the firing of the whistling birds in the little smoke trail. We'll attach all that in a moment. Uh, the batteries I mentioned earlier are for the Camtono here, which you pop this off to install the little batteries like so. And then you just open up all three sides. They have their own like little like dual hinge, like it, it hinges there and then also kind of pivots at that point. Uh, and then you flick that switch and you get the little kind of yellowish orangish light up in the top. Uh, the Beskar has a little circle which fits right onto that little plug. And there we have the lit up Beskar in the Cam Tono. Here it is with my shooting lights off for a more moody effect. Fun fact about this stack of Beskar, this little section right here is magnetized. And then this uh, single piece, put it right on top, and that completes the stack. And I think the coolest of the deluxe accessories is this additional Grogu in the pram. This is how it comes right out of the packaging, and includes a little brown blanket. Here's a look at the floating pram without the child in it, just so you can see some of the details of the inside of it. There is a magnet inside, and a magnet right there. So, Grogu fits rather easily into there. It also comes with this little cover, so you can display it closed or open. Again, it's Hot Toys. A lot of good details within the, uh, the paint. All the little metal chipped wear and tear is really, really cool. That's where it plugs into the stand. Um, I think Grogu looks adorable in it. And just taking a closer look at him, I think the sculpt on this is freaking great. Uh, I love the fact that you can see his teeth, <laughs> his bottom teeth. Uh, the ears are a little more pointed up. I like the hand placement. I like the wrinkling here of like the fabric, um, and also his his eyes, like the uh, the brows, are a little um, more raised, which I think gives him a little more a happier expression. You can see the eye shape is pretty much the same, but right there in the middle of the bridge. It's just a little more intense, a little more excited. Also, here's something fun you can do. You can take out that child and then wrap this one up and then you can make him like take a little nap inside the pram. Lastly, we get this figure stand that comes with the, uh, the metal kind of bendy arm that plugs in with the uh, clamp that you adjust, you know, vertically to get it to where you want it to be and also this little attachment piece right here and you pop this little rock off and that's where you plug in the little pole for the uh, floating pram. The pram itself is not very heavy so I have no concerns about whether this pole can support the pram. It totally can. All right let's accessorize. I'm gonna take that off and put that on. I think that looks better. 
The pistol does fit into the holster pretty easily, but this strap that goes over and feeds into this little like flat loop right there, um, it's a little snug against the surface, so it takes a little bit of patience to fit the tip of this strap into that little loop. I use the tip of this screwdriver to kind of open up that loop a little bit in order to put the strap through. The instructions say that you can attach the vibro blade right along here. However, I find that the space between the, uh, the edge of the boot and like his pants is really tight. I don't wanna break the knife. It's just like a thin little plastic. It's also worth noting that the ammo can be removed from the uh, leg section. I do wish this detonator fit into its spot a little better. You can see it kind of rests a little higher than the, the other two. It'd be great if there was like a magnet and it just like went bloop and magnetically stayed. With the jetpack being magnetic, attaching it is easy as hell. Speaking of attaching, let's attach the rifle to the back of the figure. You just open up the uh, straps that feed through that little hole from his belt. Just wrap them around the, uh, the bottom section of the rifle like so. Then you just bring this strap over the shoulder and plug it into the uh, hole right there on the shoulder strap. And there you go. The rifle is now attached to the uh, back of the Mando. Switching out the side of this for the uh, flashlight, like little head display, will require you to get your, th your fingernail right on inside the edge of the top there. But once you finally manage to wiggle it out, it comes out pretty easily. Uh, and then this just plugs in like so, and yeah, that looks cool. Switching out the whistling birds attachment is really easy. You just take that off, pull that out. Here's the one with the uh, exposed armed heads. Just plug that on. It's very, very easy. And then if you want to put on the uh, deluxe accessory, of the, uh, the firing whistling birds, you just replace the entire thing. It just plugs right on, like so. Attaching the flame accessory is super easy. You just slide it into the gauntlet, and you can see the very edge of it meets the tip of the flamethrower. Now, the instructions say to remove the hand when you uh, install the grapple wire, but I don't want to have the wire in there and then mess it up by jamming the, the fist on, maybe bumping it, bending it, breaking it. So if you just bend the hand downward a bit at the wrist joint, it leaves you plenty of room to uh, install the wire. I'm going to walk back something I said earlier. I do wish the shoulders could hit a T-pose because I think the grapple wire would look much better with the figure's arm fully extended. The fat suit underneath might be limiting that as well. Uh, I know a lot of people like to remove the fat suit from some uh, Boba Fett Mandalorian figures. I still think the figure reads fine, but I wonder if, yeah, the flamethrower effect might look a little better with a fully extended arm. The firing of the whistling darts attachment is a lot cooler looking than I was expecting. This is uh, probably one of my favorite attachment accessories from this set. Being that Grogu's body is a hard sculpt, there isn't like a, a good way for the, the figure to truly grip him and hold him in his arms, but you can get him to rest in the arm pretty easily. Even though you don't get any expressions from a helmeted character, I love that in the show you get so much personality from just like a head tilt. Every little lean and tilt creates so much personality, just like with this figure. So I appreciate the fact that there's like a solid neck joint at the base of the neck and the ball joint in the head, which really does allow for some really expressive little tilts. While I do have pretty good articulation at the ankles and knees, I do wish there was a better range of motion at the top of the legs, at the hips or the waist, so I can get them to crouch down a little more, just a little more bent at the knees. I love that they included this rifle as an accessory. I mean, obviously, why wouldn't they? But I just gotta say, I think the figure looks really cool holding it. Now, I was planning on displaying this figure standing on the figure stand, but after putting it in this flying pose, I'm really starting to have some second thoughts, because this looks freaking rad. I'm really happy with how this figure turned out uh, working with the, uh, the little support stand here, especially the fact that the uh, little C-clamp in the back manages to just clear the rocket pack, the jet pack, based on where it, it kind of grips at the waist. I thought the, the jet pack would, would hit it or get blocked and be interfered by this C-clamp, but it just perfectly barely clears it. I'm really stoked about that. Look at these two. I think they look great together. Um, it is worth noting that uh, the surface is like sculpted sand, so like it's uneven footing. So you're definitely gonna need that little clamp uh, to support them. In fact, 
you take a closer look, there are little footprints for his feet to like line up to. And uh, you definitely need the clamp to like keep, keep him stable with uh, his feet exactly in those notches. One little tiny drawback is that if you're using the clamp, uh, the, the cape, you know, would look silly draped over the whole thing. So if you have it kind of over to one side, it does tend to like stick to the little, the little thumb thing for the clamp itself, the little section that sticks out there. So from the back, it looks a little wonky, but nothing too bad. Um, this set retails for 315 bucks. And you know what? I absolutely see the value there. Um, I think it's totally worth the 315 that they were charging for this. Not just because the actual quality of the figure is good as far as like his armor and the details on it and all that, but the sheer amount of accessories that this comes with, the fact that you get two Grogu's, um, this floating pram as it attaches to the actual uh, stand, awesome. All the details on this, awesome. A lot of bang for your buck as far as quality and as far as sheer number of stuff that it comes with. So yeah, I like this a lot. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, if you want, you could follow me on social media. I'll put the links in a moment, but you can also let me know in the comments below what you think of this. And uh, if you want to subscribe to me here, be up to date with my latest reviews, you can do that too. Thanks for watching. Bye.